We are this close to a magical time of the year. You can go out, have a great day of fishing. You don't need a boat, don't need a kayak. All you need is a rod, a little bit of time, maybe some buddies. Anybody can get out there and do it. Today, we're talking about Surf Fishing 101. All right, so we are starting to get into early summer here. Maybe Texas weather is kind of doing its thing. Let these winds get out of here, start getting those nice warm mornings with the, the light five mile an hour wind. Let that, let that surf lay down. I'm telling you, it is uh, just, it's a delicious, it's delicious this time of year. So what we're gonna talk about today, we're gonna go over a little bit of Surf Fishing 101. We're gonna jump into Google Earth. We're gonna look at how you can plan your day before you even get out there. But we're, right now we're gonna talk about you know, what you're seeing when you're there, but then I'm gonna show you some ways to have an idea of where you're going and then adjust accordingly once you get there. Number one, first thing, the first thing I look for while I'm driving down the beach, whether I'm in a truck, a boat, walking, doesn't matter, is bait presence. So in the first gut or the second gut, I'm watching for, for little flickers of bait. Usually it's gonna be you know small mullet, small shrimp, maybe some shad. If you don't know what a shad ball looks like, I'm, I'm gonna be doing videos later when the wind lets me do it. But you'll look out and you'll see some, you know, some nice smooth rolling water, but then there'll be a there'll be a, a blotch in it, and the water in that is is doing this number. Now you may or may not be able to see the actual fish, but whenever the water's doing that, it's what we call nervous water. That's so that's a wad of shad that are that are pushed together. And when they're pushed together like that, there's typically predators around them that's pushing them up. You'll see, you know, little shrimp flipping, little mullet. A lot of the times whenever it's smooth and you sit and watch long enough, you can actually see the fish that you're looking for, you know, in those guts. You'll see a, you'll see a trout pop or, you know, a redfish crash something. You just have to slow down, take it in, see what's going on with it. Now, me personally, if the tide's coming in, I'm usually watching the first gut. If the tide's coming out, I'm watching the second gut. And what I'm talking about by guts is you have your beach and then it drops and then there'll be another sandbar and it'll drop again. It's usually pretty easy to see where the waves are white capping and, and, and coming over before the first gut. That's where the second sandbar is. Then it's gonna, then it's gonna have a deeper spot and it's gonna come up and it's gonna you know, lay out for you on the beach. But that, that's typically my, my first thing is if the tide's coming in, I'm looking for those fish in the first gut because the, the tide's bringing bait to them. If it's sucking out, then I'm looking for them in the second. Now we're gonna get to this in a minute, but those sandbars will often have cuts in them and that's where the better current's coming and going, ebbing and flowing. And if it's going out, it's sucking bait out that cut to the fish out there. If it's coming in, it's pushing bait through that cut to the fish in the, in the first gut. Hope you hung with that. A lot to say. So. First, first things first, bait. Now, in the surf, quite often, there's gonna be birds hanging around where the bait is. There'll be birds standing on the shoreline, there'll be birds hovering, you know, coming down and picking at the bait. So bait and birds, one and two, all right? Then we, we've, talked about the, we've talked about the cuts, and we'll get into Google Earth and show you how to find them, but say you're driving down the beach, right? And you notice it's sand, 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 and then there's a bunch of crushed shell on the beach. That is often an indicator that there is a cut in the sandbar there, because what's happening is, is the water is pushing through those cuts, and as it's pushing through it, it's, it's washing up all the, the junk out of the ocean. So if that water's coming through and pushing like this over and over, it's gonna bring the shell and wash it up on the beach. So when you, we're driving down the beach, you see a bunch of shell, um, even a bunch of you know trash stuff, uh, logs, sticks, you know anything that is out in the ocean, and if there's an abundance of it in one spot on the beach, then there's probably a, a differentiation in the current that is coming through there. So if, if it's all, all even and smooth, and then you find this one pile of stuff, well then that water's doing this. So that's another clue to tell you that there is something out there that is funneling stuff to the fish that you're after. All right, what do, what do we like to throw in this earth? Anything you wanna throw. Whatever makes you happy, give it a shot. If there's fish there, it's probably gonna work. Uh, for me, spoons, plastics, top waters, corkies, it, it, it really doesn't matter to me. I, a lot of people use bait in the surf. I really don't, 
deem it to be necessary because whenever you find fish there's usually a bunch of them and they're 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 really eating so I, I don't think you need bait but if it makes you happy go for it I personally I really like topwaters um, it's a good search bait so if I'm if I'm you know wading down a sandbar or trolling my boat I can just throw it throw it throw it throw it throw it I start getting some blow-ups if I start catching them great if I'm getting blow-ups and not catching them I'm gonna switch to a plastic or a small miradine some some little you know small flashy something and you know your day can be boom made just like that now if you have a boat and we'll cover this in a, in a later episode but if you have a boat and you're you're cruising along looking at the beach keep an eye behind you too because you'll see big groups of birds you'll i mean there there's big school of jackerbell big school of redfish there's all kinds of stuff that happened you know i went a mile off the beach i mean i still consider myself to be surf uh, fishing the surf but go out there and find big schools of big big fish they're usually not take home type fish but they're a lot of fun we like to take snoopy rods fly rods all kinds of stuff and just and just have a time with our buddies out there but so all that being said a lot of information real fast but now we're going to jump into google earth i'm going to show you how you can kind of have your day planned out to some extent before you even leave the house all right so i've broken down a piece of google earth here on the beachfront now the first thing about it whenever you're you're looking for clues is you kind of want some rough water in in the imagery you're using if it's real smooth and calm it makes it a lot harder to pick out what you're looking for so here you can see that you have white caps that move all along here and then all along here but right here in the middle there's no white cap here now the reason that's happening is over here there's a sandbar over here there's a sandbar so when these rollers are hitting the sandbar it's pushing them up and making them white cap so what that tells you is this is a deep a deep cut right here that's not pushing up and making it white cap so like I was talking about earlier if I'm wanting to fish the first gut on an incoming tide or even an outgoing if I'm seeing you know bait presence then I know water is pushing through here and I'm gonna target this whole area now if the tides going out you would either you know wade out here to the second sandbar and fish the mouth of this or if you're in a boat then you know you could power pull down out here or use your trolling motor whatever it may be and and hit this cut and around it now down here you can get an indication that there's multiple cuts so you have white caps white cap here white cap here and more white caps here but again the voids in between this kind of tells me maybe there's little humps in the sand right here so that's gonna that's gonna give you even more room to fish this entire gut or out in front of it now down here you have all these white caps and they just end and it's a big open area so this would tell me that there's an end of a sandbar here and it doesn't start again until further south so more so than really worry about this whole area in here I'm gonna be more keyed in on just around the points of this sandbar because again the, fi the fish are gonna eat where there's food being brought to them most of the time so if, if the currents coming through here and making an eddy on either side of this sandbar that's what I would be most interested in now this one here is a cut in the in the first sandbar and I really 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 like this one because it has it is clearly defined that it comes and wraps up right in here so and, and I, we've done this before we threw top waters all the way up on the sand and brought them off and right on the edge of the sand they're just getting absolutely crushed by redfish and trout so I really I really like this one this this was this is my favorite one of this area that I looked at now we have another one just like it right down here so if you're driving down the beach and you're seeing all these white caps and then a smooth spot and more white caps then you know that tells you hey this is this is somewhere to stop and at least look for bait now if you want to get on Google Earth and make yourself a game plan before you even start look down here on the bottom right and here's your latitude and longitude wherever your mouse coordinates are is it's gonna give you that reading so if you put it right here on top of it go down to the bottom right write down those numbers and then plug them into your phone your GPS whatever you may have then you have an idea of at least something to look at while you're out on the beach you know mark down five or six of them uh, you know if one of those sandbars has been closed up or if there's somebody fishing it you have more backup plans so this is the Texas Middle Coast 
it's um it's a little bit easier to read than you know florida or even south texas i went and marked some spots down in south texas as well so that we can we can look at that for the people from down there that are watching now this water is so clear that you can actually visibly see the sandbar here and here and you can see it lightly but again the white caps are giving away where those cuts are now in south texas the first cut is much deeper than it is on the middle coast so i know a lot of people they just walk down the they walk down the beachfront right here and primarily only fish this first cut the the fish don't have as big of reason to leave it whenever the tide pulls out because it still stays pretty deep for them and then there's another example of the same thing right down here again it's a very simple procedure here find the white caps find where it's not you can actually see here you can see the waves are bigger rollers here and here but they've kind of they're, they're a lot smoother through here so that tells you that's a real good steady flow of water back and forth all right so you hear us say it all the time google earth is your friend we talk about it on the bite me podcast i talk about it on my channel so there is a you know absolute demonstration of how you can spend 30 minutes on Google Earth and save yourself three or four hours of fishing time the next day. Just you know, find what you want, hit those coordinates, put it into whatever device you have. Um, those guts sometimes they sometimes they'll move a little bit, you know, from a storm or something like that. But most of them most of them hang out a long time. I have coordinates on my boat that they've been there for years and years, and, and they continue to produce. Now the the, the surf it, it isn't always a surefire thing. But whenever you find that bait and you find that water movement, you can almost guarantee yourself to, to catch some fish and have a good time. You know, fishermen of all levels, kids, anybody, you know, as long as they can get a lure in the water, it's good stuff. Hope this helped you. Surf Fishing 101. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the support. See you on the next one.